In this lesson, you'll learn how to configure advanced settings and approve patches within Managed Workplace. We'll begin by showing how to set up synchronization options, approval groups, and automatic approval options. Then, you'll learn how to use filters to quickly and easily find patches that you want to change approvals on. We'll also cover how to view patch details, run patches immediately, and generate the patch status and manage device reports. Let's get started. We'll begin with synchronization options. These determine where to store patches and what products to patch. When patches are synchronized, they are stored on the Microsoft Update server and installed as needed. Or you can choose to store patches locally on OnSite Manager. Note that if you choose to store locally, you must have a minimum of 40 gigabytes of disk space available. Let's have a look. Go to Patch Management on the main left-hand navigation. Click Settings and then select Synchronization. This is where you will specify the products you want to patch and the type or classification of patches to install. Keep in mind that this list of products is for all customers, so make sure to choose the patches that are needed across all sites. For example, you may decide to patch all Windows products but focus only on critical and security updates. To do this, we'll first select which products to patch. In the Products and Classifications window, click Change under Products. Now select each product type you want to patch from the menu. For this example, we'll select All Windows Products and click Save. Next, select the classification of patches you want to install. Click the Change button under Classifications. Let's choose to install Critical and Security Updates and Service Packs from the list. Then click Save. Now scroll down to the Site Options window. Here is where you'll specify where to store patches, either on the Microsoft Update server or locally on OnSite Manager. You have the option to select the default setting for all new sites or to choose specific sites. If you choose to store updates locally on the on-site manager, you are presented with storage options, such as a drive and the path to store patches. For this example, we'll set the new site default option to store updates on Microsoft Update. Select Save and you're done. Next, we'll set up patch approvals. Note that approval groups are not the same as site or service groups. An approval group is a container for devices which you manually or automatically approve updates. You will use approval groups for testing patches, restricting installation of patches, and controlling the installation of patches. By default, there are two approval groups, unassigned and all computers. When you create custom approval groups, you move devices from the unassigned group to the custom group. Let's give it a try. Select Approval Groups from the Patch Management Settings menu. To create an approval group, click the Add button in the Approval Groups window. We'll call it Critical and Security Patches and then click Add. Next, select Unassigned Computers from the list. Simply select each device you want to move to the Critical and Security Patches group and click the Move Selected Devices button. Now select Critical and Security Patches from the second pop-up list and then click OK. It's that easy. Finally, we'll configure automatic approval options. Automatic approval options determine what patches will be automatically approved for installation. While you may want to manually approve certain patches as they become available, there may be some patches that you always want to install immediately without the need for a manual approval. In the Automatic Approval step, you can create rules for automatic approval by specifying patch classifications and approval groups. Let's go ahead and create an automatic approval rule now. Under Patch Management, select Automatic Approval. Click the Add button to create a new approval rule. Now select your approval group. 
In our example, we will select the Critical and Security Patches approval group from the drop-down menu. Then select Security and Critical Updates under Classifications. Select Save. When you create an approval rule, you can apply it to patches that have already been downloaded to a device. To do this, select the rule and choose the More Actions button. Select Run Patch Approvals on Existing Patches and click OK. When patches are revised, you can choose to automatically approve the latest revision or continue to use the old version and manually approve the new revision. In the Revision Approval Rules window, you can use the Modify button to make your selection. In our example, we will use a default, which is to automatically approve the latest revision. Now that we have covered how to configure automatic approval, let's move on to advanced filtering. You can use advanced filtering to display a subset of patches that are available for various products and classifications. For example, update rollouts, security patches, feature packs, to name a few. For each product and classification, you can set one of four approval statuses, install, remove, declined, or not approved. Let's have a look. From the main left navigation pane, select Patch Management and click Patch Approval. In the Advanced Filtering window, you can use the Status list to filter by Needed, Failed, or Installed. For this example, we'll select Needed. Next, you'll need to select what you want to apply the filter to by clicking on the Products and Classifications list. Let's select Critical and Security Patches. You also have the option to filter by patch release date, current approval status, and the title. Click the Apply button to apply the filter you have chosen. You'll see that the list of patches will be displayed. Next, you will select the checkbox beside each patch that you want to change the approval status for and then click Change Approvals. You will now see the Change Approval screen. This is where you can apply a new approval status to any of the approval groups. Recall that we showed you how to create approval groups earlier in this course. There is also an option to create a deadline for when the selected patch must be installed. Note, a deadline can only be selected for patches set to a status of Install or Remove. To create a deadline, simply click the link beside Deadline and select the date and time using the calendar and time pop-up. Then select OK. The approval groups are listed below, allowing you to select different approval behavior for each group if you wish. The default is Same as All Computer Group. In this case, we'll go ahead and click OK, and we're done with this patch approval. OK, so we have covered approving patches, which can be done automatically or manually. However, what dictates when a patch is actually installed? You can configure patches to be installed according to a schedule or using the Patch Now feature. Scheduling patches to install on a specific day and time can be done in one of two ways from the Execution Schedules, or in the Patching Policy. Let's take a look at the Execution Schedules first. Go to Configuration on the main navigation and select Schedules, and then click New. Let's assume we want to patch our workstations at a specific day and time. So we'll call this schedule Workstation Patching. Next, we'll disable all the options for automation and AV schedules because we only want to focus on the patching schedule in this example. Click on the link that dictates the schedule. We'll configure it to run at noon every Tuesday. We'll also configure our reboot options and how we would like the system to respond if an installation was missed and then select Save. The next step is to apply this to sites, groups, or directly to devices. Select Show Advanced Configuration. In this example, we'll apply it to Groups. Under Groups, select the Add button. 
Notice at the top of the screen, you can filter by group type. Let's select Service Groups, then tick the Workstation's Windows group, and then press the OK button. Now click the Save button, and you're done. Another option is to configure the patch installation timing through the patching policy. To do this, go to Configuration, click Policies, and then select Patching. You'll see there are several patch policies already configured. Let's select the Microsoft Windows Workstation patching policy. Click the Settings tab and then click the Modify button. Choose the drop-down under Automatic Update Options. Note that the only option that allows you to schedule the installation of patches is Auto Download and Auto Install. Select that option. You are now presented with two options to install as per the applicable execution schedule, or choose to override the execution schedule. In our example, we'll choose to override the execution schedules. Select your schedule, reboot options, missed installation options, and default approval group assignment, and then press save, and you're done. For more information on policies, please refer to the policies module in the configuration of Manage Workplace course. If you'd like to apply a patch immediately, return to Patch Management on the main left-hand navigation. Click Reports and then select Device Report. Simply run the report based on the current status you want to view. You can filter by Service Plan, Approval Group, Release Date, and the Status. You'll be given a list of devices based on the filter criteria. Select the checkbox beside each device you want to patch now or select the checkbox at the top to select all the devices in the list. Optionally, you can click the arrow beside each device to view a list of patches that are needed. Click Patch Now to run patches on the selected devices. You will then be presented with a window warning you that affected devices may reboot immediately after the patch installation and confirming that declined patches will not be installed. Press OK and you're done. Alternatively, you can run the patch report to report on patch statuses across all sites and for all approval groups, and for all statuses using the advanced filtering options above. If you click the arrow next to any patch, you can see all devices associated with this patch. Essentially, it's a reverse view of the device report, which can be very helpful. You also have the option to patch now from this screen. That wraps up our lesson on approving patches. Let's do a quick recap of key points. We've covered the three main tasks for advanced patch management configuration in Manage Workplace. These are configuring synchronization options, creating approval groups, and setting up automatic approval. Approving patches can be done using automatic approval options. However, patches can be manually approved under the Patch Management Patch Approval section. In either case, approval groups are used to steer the approval of patches to the intended devices. Installing patches can be done automatically, either using the schedules or the patch policies. And you have the option to use a device report or patch report to run patches immediately on a filtered group of devices or to confirm the status of all patches. For more information, take advantage of Online Help and Service Center. There is also a complete user manual available from the ABG Partners site. In this lesson, you'll learn how to determine whether Windows patches have been successfully applied and how to troubleshoot when there is a problem. Troubleshooting means being able to remotely access devices, which is covered in a previous lesson. Let's get started. To check the status of patches and determine whether they have been successfully applied, Go to Patch Management in the main left-hand navigation and select Settings. Next, click Approval Groups from the drop-down menu. By default, All Computers is pre-selected. Clicking on the drop-down menu also reveals the option to select Unassigned Computers. In the window below, you'll see a list of all devices that appear in the Approval Group you have selected. Beside each device, there is either a green arrow icon or a gray circle. A green arrow indicates the device is checking in for patch information. 
A gray circle icon indicates the device is not checking in. As an extra measure, you can also check the last status report column to verify when the device last checked in. You now know at a glance what devices are checking in for patch information and those that aren't. For devices that do not have a green arrow and are not checking in for patch information, the most likely problem is that Windows Update is not checking in with Managed Workplace. To solve this problem, you'll need to remote into the device and check the Microsoft Registry key. Let's have a look. Go to Patch Management in the main left-hand navigation and click Settings and then choose Approval Groups. Make sure all computers is selected from the drop-down menu under Approval Group at the top. In this example, we see one device in the window below has a gray icon. We can also see that this device has not checked in. Click on this device to open the Device Overview window. Then go to Management on the right and select Remote Control. Select Remote Desktop from the drop-down and click Connect. Now that you have gained remote access to the device, you can check the Windows Registry keys. Click the device's Start button in the bottom left-hand corner. In the search window, type regedit.exe to open up the Registry Editor. Next, navigate down the Registry tree to Windows Update. As you can see in this example, the WU server and the WU status registry keys are there, but they are reporting on the wrong server for patch management. Instead, they should be pointing to the on-site manager. To correct this problem, update the Windows Update process. Go to Start and type CMD, then type in wuauclt.exe forward slash detect now. This forces Windows Update to check into Managed Workplace. In most cases, this simple troubleshooting step will resolve the problem and the device or devices will now automatically check in for patches. That wraps up our overview on patch management. We've covered how to search for devices that aren't checking in for patch status and how to troubleshoot this issue by remotely accessing the device to check the registry keys. For more information, take advantage of online help in Service Center. There is also a complete user manual available from the AVG Partners site.